Well, good afternoon, Chud Buds. Oh my god, what a January it's been. The year of the Chud is looking up. I told you, I had a good feeling. A white pill energy coming into this. We left We left last year with a little bit of a high note, a little bit of a Jack Murphy high note. The Apex Alpha Male Super Chad whacking off his tiny little dicklet for the internet to enjoy. And I don't know what he's doing right now, aside from probably crying. But it was a great way to end the year. And that energy, that fucking chud energy, that just propels your ass forward. Let's you do amazing things. In fact, I was on a stream recently with somebody named Flamenco. Sorry, I might have pronounced that wrong. Memenko? Tatenko? Something like that. And I decimated him. Decimated him in video games. Showing my mastery of it. In fact, I hurt that nigger so hard, we had to throw him a funeral afterwards. I don't care that you really were some pansy. You're my own flesh and blood, and no, you made me proud. My son's a homosexual, and I love him. I love my dead gay son. (laughs) Can you believe he actually had to go and edit the video to make it look like he won? Fucking shameful. Absolutely shameful. I destroyed him in Guilty Gear. That's how I roll. That's Chud energy unapologetic, straightforward, no shits given. Poor little Tatenko. Absolutely fucking decimated. Destroyed. I pinned a little message there for anybody that comes in late. (laughs) Uh, The honking will continue until morale improves. There's no stopping it. So this is a little January roundup. So many interesting and exciting things have happened. How could you ignore it? There's so much shit to talk about. Where do we even start? What do we start with, fellow Chud Buds? Well, let's start with an oldie, <laughs> but a goodie. Apparently, there's a documentary being made right now. A porcelain documentary. Maybe you've watched some of his videos before. He's decided to uh, cover a subject uh, that you might be familiar with. If you've ever donated to the stream, you're probably on a list. Turns out he's going to be doing a documentary about the person making that list. And I got invited to, uh, I don't know give like three seconds of audio after a six-hour conversation. But our boy, our boy Mersh is going to be the subject of a documentary, probably coming out in the next couple of months. Not exactly sure how long those take. Might be wondering, what would a what would a Mersh documentary even look like? Just so happens I've got a trailer for you. Something Porcelain had put up, I thought I'd, I'd show it off for you. Let you get a little taste of it. Mmm, tastes good. <laughs> Let's uh let's take a look at that amazing a documentary that's soon to come. Get me a worthy adversary or stop wasting my goddamn time. That is my message to these fucking redditors and these faggots. Now I know that uh, some people have called into question if I have cancer or not. I, I heard that Mersh said that. In fact, you might want to be careful, chat. I also heard that Mersh told people if you donate to me ever on any live stream I do, he's going to be very disappointed in you. But when I gave him this 375, you know, his eyes lit up as if this thing was going to last him for a year and a half. Damn, you're fat as fuck. Holy shit. Why don't, why don't you fight me, bitch? Talk some more shit. Oh, he runs like a coward. <laughs> oh, like a coward. Oh, it's Revenge of the Sis. Revenge of the Sis is ROTC. Yeah, those guys are losers, dude. I'm telling you, I got everything to prove that everything he said is a complete fucking lie. The amount of passive aggressive shots this motherfucker has taken at us, he's like literally attacks everyone who can suck his dick. Who writes a letter to the police? Oh, I'm sorry, that's right. Tink, 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 tink. I mean, who writes an email to the police? What if Mersh had more money? What would that look like? Fucking coward, fat fuck. Dude, I couldn't believe he's so fucking fat! <laughs> you wanna know why they hate me? They hate me because for probably a year, they emailed me and they were like, Nick, please come on our podcast, please come on our podcast. And I never responded because it's their name is so gay. I don't know what his show is when it's not pot awful fucking with him. A 40 something year old woman's diary. Don't follow Merch. I don't be part of the Mercer effect. And I always told you I wasn't part of it. And obviously you could see I wasn't because he hates me. 
I was ready to fight him right there on the street. But he wanted to waddle away like a fucking bitch, so let's let's organize it now. Number one is a play on Star Wars. Number two, Revenge of the Sith, the Sith gender. We might see a man who's barely able to make these payments on this rent. I love that. I love when someone's in a financial bind. I hear Mersh is having a little bit of difficulty with a, a porcelain video that's come out and an alleged documentary in the works. I'm sure that's not something he's super looking forward to. Can somebody get me somebody who's worth a shit? Please. Because I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, are you excited, chat? Has that got your chud energy feeling through your body? Can you feel it going through your veins? <laughs> uh, so I, I was unfamiliar with a lot of Mersh lore. Like, I only really knew of him from our interactions about being put on lists. Uh, but apparently, there's quite a bit of Mersh lore out there, which is why the conversation went for six fucking hours. So uh, that should be fun. Look forward to that. <laughs> Mersh has quite the uh, entertaining history. Let's put it that way. I'm not going to give any spoilers away. I know working on a documentary of this size is probably going to take a while. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin any of the twists and turns that you'll encounter. But our boy Mersh is still out there, still angry, <laughs> still very mad that you donate and buy things. Apparently, and he had a message for me. Uh, my career is over, but my the but my favorite part of this is really the second part. So let's just uh, take a quick listen. I think you'll enjoy this. You peaked in 2017. And you're still walking around YouTube in your fucking Letterman jacket trying to pick up chicks. It's pathetic, all right? Walking around like it's high school, like you're the Fonz in your Letterman jacket, fucking pussy? <laughs> Why do I get the feeling this dude got stuffed into lockers daily? It's such a weird thing to say in your Letterman jacket, walking around, bullying, acting like YouTube is high school. We should treat it like it's a college, really. Academics, please respond. Walking around like it's high school? Are you trying to get pussy? Are you trying to pick up girls in your Letterman jacket, big tough guy? Oh. Oh, you fucking chuds in your Letterman jackets, bullying the shit out of me. Shoving me in lockers. I can't take it. If you'd like to bully Mersh. <laughs> if you'd like to bully Mersh and shove his ass into a locker, have I got news for you. Chudbud officially has Letterman jackets now available for purchase. Remember, bully the weak, they deserve it. <laughs> if you ever run into Mersh, just point at the back of your jacket. Let him know you're there to bully him. That's right. Thank you, Mersh. Thank you, Mersh, for allowing me to sell more shit. <laughs> High school bullies, please respond. Pick up your Letterman jacket in the office. So we can push nerds into their fucking lockers where they belong. <laughs> oh. Of course, classic merchandise is always available. But if you want to be part of the bully crew, if you want to shove Mersh into a locker where he's having nightmares, apparently, and reliving them daily, even into his middle of his life, uh, make sure to pick up that Letterman jacket. Just remember, when you do, oh, you're done, kiddo. And I want you to know right now, That if I, I will be keeping track and I will be keeping tabs. And if I ever see people over here trying to play, trying to play cool with all of us here at Nightwave, but then if I ever go over to a gym stream and I see you donate in the gym and suck in his fucking fake cancer dick, you're done. You're so done. You chuds, you're done. No more honking for you in the hallways. You hear me? What are you? Wait, wait, stop it! What are you doing? We're ready for Apple right now. We're gonna reach into the teacher. Oh, and you chat, bud. Bully the weak merchandise. Okay, thank you, Mersh. <laughs> I love selling things because you spaz out. That's always a favorite of mine. Thank you for that. Well, chat. Like I said, it's been a fantastic January. Lots of high energy shit happening. What better way to start it off than with a little bit of gaming? A little bit of gaming news. We start our story actually last year when Microsoft was out there scalping people. Had the Bethesda acquisition for $7.6 billion, I believe. Picking up a, a shit ton of titles. Oh, oh, look at all those games. 
what's Todd going to do now? Who's going to sell shit to now? Now he's got to answer to to other people. It's going to be a little weird for him. But Microsoft decided they weren't, you know, satisfied. They wanted to curb stomp Sony a little bit more. They're like, you know, buying Bethesda really fucks them. Gives a shit like the Elder Scrolls and Fallout and Doom and all that shit. But we really need to just, uh, we need to, we need to chud butt this shit and bully the weak. See, Microsoft believes in that mentality. I'm telling you, the, the, the philosophy of the chud is spreading and Microsoft has fully fucking embraced it. So they decided they're going to bully the shit out of Sony. How are they going to do that? Mm. $68.7 billion deal with Activision Blizzard. Oh, we're going to take your Call of Duty away. We're going to own all the IPs that made you famous. Spyro, Crash, that's ours now. We're going to make them have gay sex. It's not even going to be video games. We're just going to humiliate you. <laughs> or maybe, maybe they'll take all the shit that you're nostalgic for and just make like the biggest retro circle jerk that's ever been fucking conceived. It'll be Crash Bandicoot. It'll be fucking Spyro. It'll be... Uh, 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 Banjo Kazooie, just all thrown together into one game called uh, Nostalgia. Nobody can stop them. <laughs> They'll release it on their on their system, and Sony Sony will weep. Now, of course, Sony's not going to just sit there and take it. No, Sony's a big boy. Sony decided to fire back. They got together and they said, "Look, Microsoft is out here kicking our shit in, teeth getting kicked in." Fucking chuds bullying us in high school in their Letterman jackets. What are we going to do? How do we fight back against this shit? They bought all our games. we got no games now. We have to be smart, strategic, really, about this. We need to go out there and we need to compete. We need to buy somebody ourselves. Who are we going to buy? Oh, I know. Bungie. Let's go out and buy Bungie. Oh, Sony sisters. No, not like this. Oh, my poor Sony sisters. What's going on? Why would you pay $3.6 billion for a studio that makes one video game? Do you think they thought they still made Halo? Why would you, why would you pay $3.6 billion for Destiny 2? Why would you pay $3.6 billion for Destiny 1? Or any Destiny for that matter. Microsoft goes out and buys like 800 unique IPs by buying two enormous publishers. And Sony responds, literally by buying a studio that makes one video game for $3.6 billion. You know what makes this even sadder? Let's look at the list of shit they could have bought. I want you to take a look at this list, a list Jeff Keighley put up, talking about uh, essentially the market cap for the company. It would have been more than market cap, but you get an idea. I want you to go to the bottom of that list. What do you see listed there, chat? My fellow Chud Buds, what company do you see listed for the exact same fucking price as Bungie for $3.6 billion? that has more than one video game. I don't know. This is difficult. Should we buy Bungie for $3.6 billion and get Destiny? Or, I don't know, Sega for $3.6 billion and get a whole lot more than fucking Destiny? How about we throw another billion into it and just buy Capcom? Or two billion and buy Square Enix? Or fuck it. How about we offer Konami half their market cap, let them keep the pachinko and just take their video games? But no. Let's buy Bungie. Oh. What are you doing, Sony? What exactly is this? Chat, I'm fucking confused. Could somebody explain to me what business they're running here? The only thing they seem to be running is into a wall. I don't understand the business acumen that's taking place here. I see a whole list of companies that would have been a thousand times better. And they bought fucking Bungie. And have you seen the cope? The cope from our Sony sisters out there. Oh, it's, it's terrible. I just want to give you a little... A little smattering, a little taste of it. A little, little taste, my fellow chat buds. <laughs> Here's the first one. This is mind-blowing. Uh, reported by IGN. Sony Interactive to buy Bungie, we know that. Makers of Destiny and original developer behind Halo for $3.6 billion. All, all known, nothing surprising there. Just that last sentence might be a little bit of a, an oopsie. Bungie will remain an independent subsidiary. It will remain a multi-platform studio. What? So I just, let me see if I've got this story straight, Sony sisters. You wanted to show Microsoft who the big boys are <laughs> after they bought Bethesda, Activision, and Blizzard and got 38 unique IPs. So you bought Bungie with their one video game. And then you signed a, a $3.6 billion deal to let them remain independent and release those games on other platforms. 
So you kind of threw the money right out the window. Was this, this is a brilliant strategy of Sony? I know, let's pay nearly $4 billion to not own anything outright. That'll show those motherfuckers. Oh, Sony sisters, please respond. Can somebody in chat ask, are the Sony sisters okay? I don't, I don't understand how they're going to fucking live through this. But the cope continues. It doesn't stop there. Oh, no, I'm sorry, my fellow Sony sisters. No, that would be too easy if it stopped there. Wait till you hear the reasoning behind why they spent $3.6 billion for an independent multi-platform company. Uh, reported by Christopher Drang. The motivation behind Sony's acquisition of Bungie is hel to help boost their own abilities to make live service multi-platform games equally. Sony unlocks the potential to Bungie to strengthen its technical capabilities and the prospect of taking its games to movies and TV. I want you to really think about what he's saying there. So this deal for $3.6 billion that lets Bungie remain independent and multi-platform is to teach Sony how to make multi-platform games and to help Bungie make a Destiny TV show. Yeah. Sony sisters, teach those motherfuckers. Because <clears throat> we all know how great TV and movies based on video games are. I'm looking forward to the Bungie. <laughs> Why am I saying Bungie like they're going to come up with some unique IP? I'm looking forward to the Destiny uh, TV slash movie that's coming out. And those multi-platform Sony games that will be appearing on Xbox, apparently. Uh, the deal was in the works for the past five to six months. This isn't a reaction to take to Zanga or Microsoft Activision. That's even worse. So you're telling me your competitor just drags their balls up and down your face publicly for like a week after that acquisition. And your response is, no, no, look, guys, we've been working on this for half a year. We spent half a year trying to waste $4 billion on a deal that does nothing for us except make a shitty Destiny TV show. Checkmate. And then finally, and Jim Ryan told us, we should expect more. Wonderful. What other amazing deals has Sony worked out in the background? Maybe Square Enix will go into a partnership with Sony where uh, they get access to none of their Final Fantasy franchise. Or Konami will sign a deal where they give away the pachinko machines but not the video games. I can think of so many amazing, super smart think and thought deals that Sony might come up with next. Who's running this fucking company? I'm fairly certain Sony's market cap is like $150 billion. They probably got 20 to $30 billion to play around with. And they wasted a tenth of it on this. They spent six months and wasted a tenth of it on this. I'm getting some flashbacks here. I'm getting some PS4 flashbacks here. Is that what the library is going to look like? Sony Sisters, is that what we're looking forward to for the next uh, six, seven years? With these kind of amazing uh, uh, deals going on in the background? Because uh, I'm thinking it might be. And when they remaster Bloodborne and release it on PC, are you going to scream? <laughs> how, are, how are you going to cope with that? What are you going to do, Sony Sisters? Oh, Sony Sisters. Real talk. Let's all sit down. I'm glad you came. Look at you all. You're all beautiful women. <laughs> we need to talk about the PlayStation 5. How many copies of Destiny 8 are you going to buy? Because we're desperate here. We have no video games. Microsoft has bought everybody. Sony Sisters, please. Microsoft has bought everybody. There's no more Call of Duty. It's gone. They even bought EA. We weren't even paying attention. Battlefield's gone now, too. In fact, the only first-person shooter, <laughs> we, the only shooter in general we have on our platform is Destiny. That's why we've made another five of them uh, in the last year. Sony Sisters, please, you need to buy as many copies as you can. We can't lose this war. <laughs> We're fucking desperate here. Oh, Chad, how did it turn out like this? How did Microsoft do this? I'll tell you how. It's Chud Energy. It's Chud Lifestyle. Sony's learning a lesson. It got a little too Calif California-ish for its own good. Microsoft came in there and just fucked them right in their ass. Which, based on this picture, they might have enjoyed. <laughs> I can't really speak to that. I don't know. Terrible day for Sony sisters. Terrible day. Great day if you're on the PC. You know, because fuck it. While they're all fighting over what publishers are going to get, we've got titles like Sex with Hitler. Real game, by the way. <laughs> Real game up on Steam. Mostly positive, too. Uh, I like how it's psychological horror sexual content, but also under casual games. 
It's a casual, psychologically sexual horror game. <laughs> That's the PC lifestyle right there. Okay, you got PC, and then right below it, you got Microsoft and Nintendo. And then, you know, below that, by a couple miles, maybe Ouya. And then below Ouya, you've got Sony. But at the top, cream of the crop, sex with Hitler, casual game. <laughs> From the romantic room. Everybody wishlisting that? I see everybody in chat's running out to wishlist it. Understandable. Understandable that you do that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm not a business genius. Apparently I'm not. I mean, I sell hats on the internet. So who am I to talk about uh, what Sony does with $3.6 billion? But if I was the guy making the decision when they said, hey, what are we going to spend this $4 billion on? Do we want to... Uh, go into an exclusivity deal with uh, Bungie where it's not exclusive and they can still release their games wherever they want and be independent and pay them a lot of money for no reason. Or uh, do we want to buy fucking Sega? I probably would have gone with Sega. Or I probably would have been, you know, like, let's let's throw another couple billion in there and just get Capcom so we could just have all the fighting games. You know, the Resident Evil shit, you know, Monster, Monster Hunter, all, you know, just all that shit. I would have maybe gone with that over Destiny. But I'm just a fucking chud. And what do I know? I don't know, chat. Let me ask you. Let's put up a poll here to see what chat thinks. Uh, let's let's see. Who should they have bought? <laughs> uh, Bungie? Or Sega? Let's find out. Maybe I'm just... I'm, it's Ask the Community time. Here we go. on pen that message. There you go, Chad. I'll give you a few minutes to, to vote on that. Let's see what, what we get going here. Uh, who they should have bought. Should they have gone with Bungie or Sega? If it theoretically was very close to being the same amount of money. You know, $3.6 billion for Bungie. Market cap listed for Sega, $3.6 billion. We'll see. This might also be a really good way to gauge how many people are Sony fans at the audience. <laughs> Oh, boy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, thanks. Thanks, man. It just froze on me. Have I made too much fun of Sony? There might be... I might be in trouble, chat. I might have made too many jokes. Let me just refresh here. See what's going on. Oh no, chat's moving. Okay, all right. Looks like uh, looks like Sony had enough of my shit there for a second. I thought maybe they're coming after me. One too many jokes, Jim. Not very funny. If I refresh this, is this gonna fuck up my connection? Oh, it's probably gonna do it. But let's do it anyway. Yolo. It looks good. Yeah, something dropped there for a second. That's very bizarre. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All right. I think that's long enough for the poll. The whole one minute long. Uh, chat seems to think, based off 5,000 votes, Sega would have been the better choice to go with. You know, Sega instead of Bungie. Who, who would have thought? 84% to 16%? Never saw that coming. <laughs> who would have seen that coming? Except for fucking anybody with a brain, probably. I had some articles I was going to read, but you know what? We we don't need it. I think I think Chad has spoken, essentially, uh, for what's going on. Uh, now I do have something coming up. Let's 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 move on. Let's move on to the next hot topic. Of course, you're the Chuds, just rolling on through. We'll go from the. Oh, am I having technical issues? Oh, oh boy. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Sony sisters, we might have a technical issue here. Something's gone on. One second. Let me, let me see. Let me see what's going on. We'll go from the... We've got to check something here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, potatoes. I, uh, my, uh-oh, uh-oh. It's been age-restricted. 
The chat has been age restricted. I've made too many jokes. I've made too many jokes. There go my super chats. Ouch. Oh, God, Sony sisters. One too many jokes. And there, there went the super chats. They're gone. Oh, I've got a letter here. Would you like me to read the letter to you? Hello, Mr. Mediker. We have reviewed your content and determined that it's not suitable for viewers under the age of 18. As per our community guidelines, as a result, we've age-restricted the following content. We haven't applied a strike to your channel, and your content is still live for some users on YouTube. Keep reading for more details. Uh, how does it feel to be fucked in the ass there, buddy? Oh, you like that? Oh. So you make a few jokes about Sony, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Age restricted. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, we can't do that. <laughs> All I did was talk shit about Sony. Age restricted. That's what happens. Sony can't handle this chud energy. Sony can't handle it. Sony sisters are so upset they've thrown a tizzy fit. Is Susan a Sony sister? I don't know. All I know is, oh, right up the, right up the shitter. Right up the shitter. Oh, it hurts. It hurts so bad, chat. Oh, oh, there's only one way to recover, chat. There's only one, there's only one way to recover. You've got to buy things. You've got to go and buy Chud Bud gear. Bully the week, chat. Bully the week. Maybe Mersh couldn't handle it. I don't know. There's two possibilities. Mersh got upset that I said he liked being stuffed in a locker. Or Sony sisters couldn't handle. <laughs> couldn't handle me talking shit about their public acquisition. Oh, well. Things roll on nonetheless. Let uh, let me let me get it set up here. Where were I? Jumping ahead a little bit. Oh, okay. As I was saying. A lot of things happened in January. A lot of uh, a chud energy things. And one of them was the anti-work subreddit. Now, anti-work subreddit had like a million plus people on it. A lot of fucking people in the anti-work subreddit. You might be asking what exactly the story is there. Well, I, I don't know. They don't like work. I mean, if it had been like a neat paradise, it would have been kind of cool. But it was a lot of people with uh, 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 qualms, let's put it that way, with the working environment and work in general. Some bullshit, some some reasonable. Well, of course, if you know anything about any community that exists on the internet, whether it's got five people in it or five million people in it, there's a Janny that had to fuck it up. Jannies can't help themselves. It's like some kind of a, a thing in their brain. They just, they, they lose control and fuck it up for everybody. And so, of course, the uh, Janny on the subreddit decided, I'm going to I'm going to represent one and a half million people by going on to Fox News and showing everybody what we're all about. And you can probably imagine how well that turned out. We're going to take a look at the snippet of it. This is the head Janny for our anti-work that completely destroyed a subreddit of one and a half million people, Doreen Ford, uh, going on to talk to Fox News. Let's, uh, let's take a listen. Over 1.6 I know the audio is very low. Let me put on closed captioning. Now is the person who operates this I think they did this to avoid group, to avoid uh, copyright. Right, so Doreen, Isn't she beautiful, chat? Can we get a, a B like for beautiful in chat? Doreen is a lovely lady. Not working, but still getting paid by corporate America. Yeah. Uh, so there's some misconceptions about the movement. Um, so we're a movement where we want to reduce. The amount of work that people feel like they they're forced to to do um and so we want to still put in effort we want to put in labor um but we don't want to necessarily uh be in a position where we feel trapped you know um you just quoted from office space where that person feels very trapped in their job i think we're calling for a society where there's i like as this interview goes on too if you watch the host i think it's jesse waters i don't know what his fucking name is as you watch the host while this goes on he's got this smirk it's like this this smile that won't go away. You know, like you know you've got something cornered and you're just waiting to go. It's like a predator's smirk. This is what I imagine a lion looks like when it's hunting out on the fucking, the plane somewhere. Just ready. Look at his eyes focused. Almost ready to lick his lips. He's ready to pounce. Lots of that. Um, but yeah, absolutely, people still 
want to do things they just want to do things where they feel rewarded and they feel like they're in a good spot in their life uh and that their job respects them and stuff like that um you know there's varying so you're on the, uh, so doreen but you're not being forced to work this isn't this isn't slave labor you, you've you've applied for a job you've agreed to the terms and conditions of the employment and you know you can walk away from that job at any time and quit so i don't understand yeah, really what this is about sure. except it sounds like maybe people are just being lazy are you encouraging people well, sure. to be lazy so, um so i think laziness is um a virtue in a society where people constantly want you to be productive 24 7 and it's good to have rest um that doesn't mean you should be resting all the time or not putting effort into things that you care about but i think one of the what do you think is like a work good work day how many hours is is you know a solid work day in, in your ideal right. society uh sure i mean i think as much as people want i mean i personally uh work i have i have like a 20 25 hour work weeks which i think is fairly good um so i would like less work hours um and what I do you do doreen oh, i'm a dog walker a dog walker okay yes and how uh yeah so how I old i i love this i love it. he knows he knows there's blood in the water now oh oh you work 20 hours a week what do you do doreen oh you're a dog walker how old are you? How are you, if you don't mind me asking? Sure, I'm 30. You're 30. Okay. Oh, oh, that hurts. That's painful. So the head Janny of our anti-work decides to represent one and a half million people by going out to Fox News and telling everybody, Hi, I'm a transsexual named Doreen who walks dogs for 20 hours a week, and I'm 30 years old, but I'd like to work less hours. Didn't, didn't work out as well as they might have expected. You know, they they're rocking that look. They're rocking that look. People got a little bit a little bit angry, a little bit upset, uh, being the butt of every joke on the internet for like a week straight. But uh apparently they were the best pick for this job. Doreen was trying to explain to everybody in the subreddit uh that they, you know, had a tough time. Uh if you read that second one, they're abolish work on this subreddit. Uh, I have a tough time with that being autistic. And then it was, I'm curious, did you share the offer for an interview with the other mods beforehand? Uh, to which they respond, the interview offer was given to the mods via mod mail, and they specifically asked for me. I shared that with the other mods, and they all agreed that I was probably the best to do it because I've done other media. This was their best choice. Doreen the dog walker, who's 30 years old and has been walking, walks dogs 20 hours a week. Best choice of all the mods on this subreddit to go on to Fox News to represent them. A little mistake happened, though. Apparently, they miscalculated their working hours. Again, arguing with people. Uh, where somebody had asked them, how is 20 hours too much? Why is that, you know, what's going on? It's a radical movement of people that work 40 hours a week. And some uh, beat their bodies up with physical labor uh, to scrape by and get mistreated. The problem isn't I have to work 40 hours. It's I'm broke after working that much. Uh, to which Doreen responds, I walk almost two hours every day, five days a week. This isn't the Oppression Olympics, so knock it off. Also, I'm not your bro. If you do a little bit of quick math there. Uh, wait, didn't you tell Jesse you work 25 hours? Two times five is 10 hours. Oh, no. You can imagine what the reaction to that was, of course. Shut it the fuck down. We've humiliated ourselves nationally. <laughs> We've humiliated ourselves nationally. What are we going to do? We're going to shut it the fuck down. Lock that subreddit up. Can't have anybody coming in here saying mean things. Wouldn't like that to happen. All those fucking chuds laughing at us. Talking about how we're nothing but lazy dog walkers. Well, it just kept getting worse for Doreen, of course. Uh, they tried to go to other subreddits like Work Reform. I'm Doreen, the moderator from the interview. Our anti-work is private until this blows over. I'll answer any questions and complaints in this thread. And the response from the mod there, permanently banned. Get the fuck out of here, Doreen. If it wasn't bad enough, Doreen was then fired from their free work position. Statement from anti-work. Uh, regarding abolish work, we are planning to remove her from her moderation duties and have contacted the admins for the removal of her as a mod. We thank her for building up the anti-work movement, but regarding the past incidents, we decided as a majority to remove her. Uh-oh. Well, luckily they've got other jannies that can step in to fix this mess. Other people that are just equally as... Oh, wait, no, they're all sex offenders. <laughs> Oops. Apparently, 
one of the other moderators that was in the subreddit who deleted their posting history and then fucking disappeared completely by deleting their account, somebody by the name of White Pirate 15 this is all alleged, but you could see this transpire in real time, uh, posted in some very interesting places, like uh, our gay incest. I would just be like, so I guess you failed no not November. I find that really interesting. I have to think about this some more. Thank you for replying. I'm new to this whole incest thing, but I can't imagine walking in on my parents having sex, even with other people, let alone them walking in on me. Another hot take from our gay incest. There's a lot to read. I read most of it and skimmed a little, so forgive me if I've missed something important. That being said, assuming your brother is gay, or at least bi, there would be nothing wrong with the two of you dating. I've heard of other gay guys who also have brothers dating. From my understanding, the reason most people have to, again, are against incest is because of the possibility of genetic defects in their children. That's not a problem when you're with gay guys. So you're both of age and both consenting. I see no problem with it. And then, of course, the final. Uh, how public? Like, will you, uh, you, will you be in a trailer, a park trailer, or what? I don't know. That uh, second to the last post there, chat. I'm getting the vibes there. I'm getting some vibes there that maybe... <laughs> Maybe some shit's going on, uh, going on here. I don't know. Oh, is our poor, is my, am I getting beat up more now on YouTube? YouTube, what are you doing to me? Oh, no, there we go. Okay, just double checking. Just double checking. So it's been a shit show at uh, our anti-work, as you can imagine. I mean, I think the takeaway from this, uh, there's a lot more to it. I could go over a lot of the shit that they've written. It's pretty hilarious. One of the new mods that's taken over the top position there came from a, a a rape subreddit, not as in, haha, rape is funny, but like, how do we deal with sex pests? You might be wondering why that is. Is that because of the gay incest guy? No, no, actually not, not that time. No. I mean, that's just a funny aside. That's just something that happened. The reason the R rape admin became a fucking Janny at the R anti work subreddit is because of this. Turns out Doreen has a little bit of a history our, answer, our anti-work mod, who went on Fox News, admitted to raping a woman. This is fucking disgusting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no, Jannies, what are you doing? So you're telling me the 25-hour-a-week dog walker who's 30 years old and does it for free on the internet also apparently tries to do women for free against their consent? Fuck Jannies. I've never seen a subreddit get fucked that hard into the dirt that quickly by the group of people moderating it than I, I've watched over the past week as they have stumbled over and over and over again amongst themselves. It's a little bit shameful. It's a little bit embarrassing. But they just keep doing it. I count it as another win. I don't know, Chud Butts. Let me, let me, let me pull you again. Since I love this polling feature so goddamn much. Go over here. <laughs> Is this another Chud victory? Let me ask the community. Is the implosion of our anti-work another Chud victory? Chat, you're going to have to tell me. I'm counting that as a W. I see a lot of people in chat saying, a death to Jannies. <laughs> And they do it for free. Oh, we've got an overwhelming amount of people that are saying, yes, that is a that is a solid victory. It's a 97 to 3% poll right now. I'll give it a few more minutes. But we'll see where it goes. Chud supremacy I see in a chat. Uh, Chud W, Chud, rise up. Chud bros forever. Yeah, you can't stop Chud bros. <laughs> oh. What a time to be alive. Xbox out there stomping on Sony sisters. Our anti-work imploding in the most embarrassing way possible. Embarrassing every single Janny associated with it. One dude's out there reading gay incest. The other one's getting accused of raping women. There's another one that's like a 20-year-old anarchist that's never worked before. <laughs> that was like, I'll handle the interviews. And they all fucking freaked out on him. Oh, I, I think this is almost more definitive than the who should a Sony have bought, Sega or Bungie. And we got 5,000 votes and it's 96% yes. I don't think it's going to change. 
I'm pretty sure all the Sony sisters have left after flanking the stream for making fun of them. <laughs> so I think I think we can wrap a bow up on that one. I think we can wrap a bow up on that one. Now let me see here. I think it's time to get into the big stuff. I think it's time to talk about the honking. I mean, that's what we're here for. That's that I think is the mm, that's a chef's kiss of this month, isn't it? I mean, the Microsoft and Sony shit, that's funny. Our anti-work, that's humorous. But the honking, that's that's got some that's that's some spicy shit. That's some good stuff. And I know I know you want a little sampling of it. Now, our story begins with Jester Trudeau. How do I pronounce his name? Who cares? We'll just call him Justin. Mr. Trudeau, uh, very upset that people would want to do a truck convoy in his country, explaining that it was a fringe minority of people protesting things, and he was very vague about it, tried to say what they were protesting. Was it freedom? Was it vax mandates? He didn't care. They're a fringe minority. Small people, we don't care. I'm Justin Trudeau. Now, who is Justin Trudeau? He's a fucking leaf. I'm not sure how familiar you are with him, chat, if you're not Canadian. But he's a Prime Minister of Canada. Uh, he's also a massive spurg and a cuck. Uh, I've enjoyed many years of laughing at Justin as he's done stupid shit. To give you an idea of that, I would rather see a nuclear blast in Toronto than press the button and attack another country myself. It's a, another Justin gem for you. Uh, or how about, if you kill your enemies, they win. Brilliant strategy. I'm sure he's written The Art of the Maple Leaf. Mr. Uh, Trudeau there, with his uh, his insights and witticisms about how to deal with energy <laughs> or uh, enemies. If you kill them, they win. So Justin was not very happy about this uh, trucker protest that was being talked about. Oh, these truckers are going to show up. They're going to protest some stuff. He said, ah, oh, who cares? They're little people, little people that aren't going to do anything. I'm not scared of them. They can't do shit. I'm Justin Trudeau. Don't you know who I am? So what did Mr. Trudeau do when the truckers finally arrived? He ran. Like a little bitch. Trudeau accuses Canada truckers of hate, abuse, and racism as he tests positive for COVID after evacuation. <laughs> now, you might be wondering, what do you mean evacuation? I'd like to think that means he shit himself. But no, it means he fled. You see, Justin Trudeau ran away. When the truckers showed up, not only did he test positive for COVID, he then ran away because the truckers were in town. <laughs> if you've seen Mr. Trudeau, please contact the government. They've been desperate to get a hold of him. There's been an Amber Alert out for him for like three or four days now. I know he did a press conference recently, but we just want to make sure he's safe. We want to make sure he's okay. You'll know who he is. He's the only guy in the Aladdin outfit with blackface on. Now, I know these truckers are terrifying. In fact, you know, let me set the stage here for the honking with a better background. There we go. Now, these truckers are terrifying. They're out there telling everybody they're looking for a little ass fucking. I mean, this is an anal first movement. <laughs> you motherfuckers are in trouble. Now, what exactly is going on right now in Ottawa? All these truckers show up. Oh, they're driving their big rigs. What are they doing up there? They're making Redditors absolutely melt the fuck down. If you thought, if you thought our anti-work was funny, you have seen nothing. You've seen nothing yet. I want to show you how neurotic these people are. Because truckers are out on the streets. Let's start it off with this classic. Our kitty fear pooped in our bed, among other places. She never has accidents outside of the box. My I'm livid. My poor little girl. I feel so terrified for the pets of downtown. Those fucking truckers out on the streets of Ottawa are making cats stress shit all over their owners' faces and their living rooms and their bedrooms and their apartments. Redditors are locked in their apartments right now with their cats stress shitting all over the place and there's nothing they can do about it. I want you to imagine yourself in that situation. Oh. No, Mittens, no! Oh, no, stop the honking! He's shitting everywhere! No, Mittens, stop! Whiskers, no! That's Mama's Francie. Get off the box. Oh, stop shitting everywhere. Fucking cat, stop the honking. No! Whiskers is a bad kitten. No, stop it. Fucking stop it, Whiskers. You're getting shit all over Mama's Francie. No! No. No. 
the band camp. <laughs> That's a life of Redditors right now. For like the last two days. Non-stop. Non-stop cat shits, non-stop honking. My cat is stress shitting all over the apartment. That is fantastic. Of course, they've got, you know, a description for the constant never-ending honking. The Chud Visigoths. You hear that, boys? I swear to God, if the honking by the Chud Visigoths goes late into the night, I'm going to flip. I'm going to flip out if these motherfuckers are honking at night. I'm telling you, I'm not putting up with it. By the way, are are they honking at night? I don't know. Is there a way to check to see if the Chad or Chud Visigoths are honking at night? Let's uh, let's take a listen. Does this sound like it? Oh yeah, throw some fireworks in there. Make that cat shit real hard. Hey Redditors, fuck you. <laughs> so the truckers. After being called Visigoths, decided, well, if they're shitting all over their apartments, let's kick it up a notch. Let's light some fireworks off and really get these things shitting on the walls. <laughs> let's coat their fucking apartments in poop. That's how we roll. Poor Redditors out there having fucking, oh my god, panic attacks, you guys. I'm literally standing outside of London Drugs crying and having a massive panic attack because of these fucking white supremacists. <laughs> Freedom fighters? driving by and honking their horns and waving their flags, who have no idea what real oppression even looks like. Drive-by honkings. Canadians in Ottawa are the victims of drive-by honkings. All-night honkings. Surely they won't be honking through the night, right? I hope for our sanity it doesn't. Otherwise, I'm sleeping in the bathroom with the door closed. Oh, I hope they don't honk through the night. I couldn't, I couldn't handle that. You're going to be sleeping in the bathroom anyway because your cat shit all over your apartment. What, what else? Where else are you going to sleep? What else are you going to do? And of course, don't forget the trauma of phantom honks. The honking is never going to end, is it? I can't tell if it's real anymore or phantom honking. <laughs> phantom honking! My mental health can't take this any longer. I almost threw up from the constant honking at my office. I hope our members of Parliament are safe and secure before things get bloody tonight. I want to fucking die. I was just saying to a friend this would cause me severe mental anguish just from the noise. I hope you're okay. Can you go somewhere for a while? I need some psychological soothing because of the honking. The never-ending honking that's taking place. <laughs> I'm being besieged by honking and cat shit. These are torture honks. So at least three large trucks have been blocking Dalhouse and Riddow for the past 10 hours. All of them have been running their 150 decibel air horns nonstop for 10 hours now. We live roughly 75 meters away. This is going to continue nonstop throughout the night and tomorrow. This is a torture technique. Oh, and not a single cruiser has been down George Street the whole fucking day. They don't want to go near this mob, obviously. You think by law we'll be here by 11 p.m. if I report this? I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess that's a no. My street has had non-stop honking for the last six hours. We need to stop calling this a protest. This is terrorism. <laughs> Myself and many I know are stressed out, apparently are cats, and some are just shivering from literally being sieged by the honking. I think my favorite one is this one, though. This lady, just non-stop. The horns are driving me mad. Now people, they're using people's lawns as toilets, shitting in their yards and pissing in their yards. Oh, she was very mad. These people are so unholy, unsurprisingly boorish, vulgar, and trashy. They so perfectly match their causes. Medicine kids and families out on the streets yesterday. Now using people's lawns as toilets. Their horns are driving me mad. Coming up on six hours. The nonstop. Honking. So there they are in Ottawa. A city full of Redditors. Surrounded by rooms of nothing but pure cat shit, drinking wine by the box load, as unending, unceasing honking doesn't stop. <laughs> Would you like to see? I love the attitude, too. So the Redditors are in their apartments literally screaming, screaming and hitting the wall, just punching the wall in pure fucking rage at the never-ending honking. And what are the truckers and the protesters doing? <laughs> this is what they're doing. <laughs>
They're out there having a fucking techno rave. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? It's like they're digging up old memes. It's like they said, how can we how can we make the stressed out cat shitters even more angry? I know. Release the techno viking. Ottawa is being besieged by techno vikings. It's the goofiest shit. Oh, it's been great. It's been great watching it. Of course, we need to understand that there's some real danger involved. Um, these truckers clearly have been sent by foreign powers uh, to use honking to undermine Western democracy, according to the CBC, that is. Uh, you know, given Canada's support of Ukraine in this current crisis with Russia, it, I don't know if it's far-fetched to ask, but, but there is concern that Russian actors could be continuing to fuel things uh, as this as this protest grows but perhaps even instigating it from from the outset uh, you know you know uh because the russians are clearly known for their love of techno and honking it's a it's a tried and true tradition of mother russia and the old ussr when i think uh, soviet union i think uh honking techno beats and fireworks displays in the middle of ottawa <laughs> and cats stress shitting all over the house of course it's those goddamn Russians. It's those Russians and the Nazis. Oh, they're everywhere. Making my cat shit itself. I just, I want you to understand the level of honking that's taking place when these Redditors are screaming. <laughs> when these Redditors, listen to how loud this is. This is what they've been hearing for two days straight. <laughs> so good that's what i mean by the year of the chud my friend oh, let me close that. <laughs> just out there out there doing whatever they feel like oh you can't stop it you can't stop it the honking will continue it'll never end you can't make it end <laughs> holy shit it's been a good month I'm telling you, see, that's what I mean when I told you on that New Year's stream, we're going into some fun shit. It's going to be fun times ahead. Jack Murphy with his cuck implosion. Microsoft out there making Sony sisters seethe. Then you've got our anti-work imploding in a very funny way and all their jannies getting exposed to sex offenders, <laughs> essentially. And now you've got Ottawa, an entire city going insane. The Prime Minister of Canada has literally fled in terror because methed out truckers are shitting in people's lawns and doing techno music honking <laughs> for 48 hours straight. Everybody's out there having fun and partying and people are just in their apartments just fucking screaming. But you can't hear it because there's just honking going on nonstop. It has been a good month. It's been fun times. <laughs> and of course, my amazing vi uh, victory over flamenco, which I'm counting as... Uh, part of all of that. How could you not? Uh, we've got more to come here. Let me let me take a small break for a few minutes. Put on some background music. Uh, what background music can we use? Well, I'll just go with an old one. Why not? Tried and true. You can never go wrong with a little of this. We'll take a small break for a few minutes. I'm going to grab a drink, grab something for yourself. We'll come back and continue on with the white pill chud energy of the January recap for the year of the chud. Chud buds, yeah, you don't, you don't be Rama Rama. Okay, we don't want to be sniffing that petrol. It's dangerous stuff. <laughs> oh. Well, let's see. What do, do I have anything left here? I don't know. God, I've talked about so much stuff. We talked about the merch documentary, the Xbox buyout, anti-work subreddit, the honk, if you can hear me. What else do we have here? Oh, oh, it looks like, 
It looks like Dick Masterson sent me a clip from his show to play. I don't, I don't know why he'd do that. Apparently he said, please, Jim, uh, play this on your stream. I think people will enjoy it. Uh, pff, oh, I mean, okay. You know, I'm a big Dick Masterson fan. If he's asking me to do that for him, I can help you out. I can do a solid for you, brother. Ralph, are you there? What's up, man? Can you hear me? How oh, do I you sound, sound hey. fantastic. What's up, Ralph? How you doing? <laughs> You're making me sick with great. jealousy. I'm doing great, man. You're chopping up a little bit, so I was trying to see if I could hear you, but it sounds okay now. Cool. Am I, am I still good? Yeah, you're yeah, good. You sound great. Uh, what, okay. Um, okay. How's the trip been so far? Please say horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's been awesome. Oh, it looks like it looks like there's been a little bit of trouble in paradise. What happened? Oh no! Oh no! Somebody. Somebody's got a bit of an owie. I'm not sure what's going on here. Chad, I guess we're going to have to go over the story of what that clip's about. Dick, I don't know. Ooh, it's a little harsh, but okay, Mr. Masterson. <laughs> Apparently our story begins about two weeks back when Ethan Ralph and Andy Worski uh, were having a fight on Twitter, which led to Ethan Ralph declaring that he was going to fly out to Portugal to teach Andy a lesson. Anybody interested in seeing me fly to Portugal this Sunday and do a week of shows and reporting from that country? No. I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Anybody want to see me go to Portugal? No. It's, a little, it's a, little, a little harsh, but okay. Of course, Andy's response. Uh, do it. I dare you. Do it. Please do it. Also, Vax Ralph confirmed. Uh-oh. Now, originally, Ralph was going to be flying out to Portugal, um, I guess, as a way to teach Andy a lesson. Andy had wanted to move out there. He talked about moving out there, but he hadn't moved out there yet. So Ralph was like, I've got the money. I'm going to go out there and um, rub it in your face. And I'm going to bring Dick Masterson along with me. But what do you know? At the very last minute, mysteriously, Dick Masterson broke his foot. Later on, explaining, holy shit, am I glad I faked breaking my foot to get out of this? When Ralph had said, well, I've definitely got my experience in Portugal in a way I never thought I would. What is it with me with four-on-one fights? LOL. And forgive my hair, but that's not a stylist on call here in the hospital. Now, I think Dick knew. I think Dick knew what was going on ahead of time. You don't want to be in a foreign country and be too American, like walking around in a Burger King hat. It's probably asking to be beaten to death in the streets of Portugal. It's such an Amerimut meme. <laughs> I should go to a foreign country and eat hamburgers. They could spot you a mile away. In fact, I think Burger King and McDonald's exist in foreign countries just to point out who the American tourist is. And surely enough, that's what happened. Now, after Ralph tweeted this, there was a little bit of discussion. Is he going to go? Is he not going to go? Dick broke his foot. He's not going to go. Maybe this isn't going to happen. So Andy uh, started a new show recently with uh, PPP called the Kino Casino, decided to do an episode called the Fuck Ralph Festival. And I'm fairly certain this was enough to really push Ralph over the edge and to confirm his trip to Portugal. So Ralph flies out there. He's having a wonderful time eating Burger King, you know, the uh, food of the Portuguese people. Uh, we all know they love their, their, <laughs> their Big Macs and their French fries in Portugal. And then, of course, what happens when you're American in a foreign country? Well, keeping it real goes wrong. Oh, wait, don't want to jump ahead. Jumped ahead a little on that one. Uh, here's a tweet from somebody once he had made landfall in Lisbon, Portugal, which is the capital. Uh, get out of my country, retard, to which he said, come make me, bitch. And then three days later, Ethan is being taken care of at a hospital in Lisbon. He has surgery in the morning to repair his orbital bone. He will be recovering in there for about a week. Thank you all for your concern and well wishes. He's an incredibly strong man. Cannot wait for his return. Now to add some insult to the injury, he was robbed. Uh, Gator asking him, did you get your shit back? Some of it, basically 150 euros. My bag and my cards is what they got. I kept fighting, but it wasn't a good idea, LOL. Kept my phone, watch, and some of my other shit. Still have my passport. To add even more insult to even more injury, they put his purse up for sale on eBay. Ethan Ralph flew out to a foreign country to teach Andy Worski a lesson and was beaten in the streets to the point of needing hospitalization and surgery. They then stole his purse and sold it on eBay. <laughs> How does that fucking happen? How do you get your purse stolen? 
Why do you have a purse? Memento! Memento! Ralph, what the fuck? What makes this even funnier is this tweet before all of this happening. Five dars. <laughs> Five day star, five star days is all I fuck with now. I only fuck with five star days. This is this is almost this quote. Quote from man stabbed. What are you gonna do? Stab me? Apparently yes. Apparently yes. You're going to get stabbed. Five star days. I'm having such a good time down here. Fuck you, Andy Worski. Look at my purse. I got a beautiful purse. I'm down here in Portugal. You too goddamn poor to fly out here, boy. I'm gonna fuck Quartering's wife while I'm out here in Portugal. Eating my Burger King with my beautiful purse. Oh, look at that. Some Portuguese men are coming up to me. What are you gentlemen? Why? Stop hitting me, goddammit! I look five foot one to you. Maybe it's you who's getting hit, motherfucker. <laughs> Gets hospitalized. Now, I don't know. I had to look this up. Orbital bone injuries, right? Uh, apparently, the surgery for it, you need like two or three weeks to recover. If you get on a plane, it fucks with like that. I mean, he's fine. He got through the surgery just fine from what I understand. Uh, but it fucks with your orbital bone, pressure differences. You get on a plane to pop shit. Things go bad. So the only way Ethan Ralph can now return home is by sea. He's got to get on a fishing boat. <laughs> He's got to get on a fishing boat and sail the ocean back to America from Portugal. All to teach Andy Worski a lesson. But I think there's a bigger question here. Okay, we need to put on, it, it's detective time. I need, you know, this story about being jumped by four people and them stealing his purse, it's a little too convenient. I think this was a hit job. And it's our job, chat, to figure out who did it. We need to figure out who is the purse thief that accosted uh, Ethan Ralph in the city of Lisbon in Portugal. And to do that, I need to bring up a list of suspects. Let's put on the music, our thinking caps get the suspects up on screen here we've got six of them chat we're going to talk about each of them a little bit and then you're going to vote and tell me who's responsible who is it who did it let me just get the poll ready Oh, that lets me ask you for four of them. Well, you know what? That's fine. Well, we'll do a second poll for the, the last part. Let me start going over some of these. First we have... Okay, that's better. First up, chat. Our first suspect. Suspect number one, CRP. Coach Red Pill. Coach Red Pill is in Europe. Now, it would have been a like 3,000 mile <laughs> drive for him to get there. But Coach Redpill recently has gone in co completely insane. He's posting Tyler Durden quotes and talking about Project Mayhem and telling people to put bubble gum in federal buildings' locks on their doors and shit. So maybe to fund his new Project Mayhem project, CRP drove 3,000 miles to Lisbon, Portugal, beat the living shit out of Ralph, and took his purse, because that's an Armani purse, to sell it for funding for his next endeavor. That's suspect number one, CRP, Coach Red Pill. Suspect number two, Matt Jarbo. Humiliated, derided by Ralph for years from the Boulder Street. Matt really isn't very rich, so maybe he swam to Portugal. I'm not sure how he got there. He found a way. Maybe he got an uh, Uber Eats offer to deliver from America, and he paddle boated his way over there. He waited for Ralph to walk down an alley, and when he wasn't looking, hit him with a fucking boulder in the head and took his purse. It's like a trophy sitting in his room. Suspect number three is not, in fact, Jesus Christ. That's Kraut and T. Kraut and T, of course, had uh, some beef with Ralph and a lot of other people, really. But he's also in Europe. I'm not sure exactly how far away he'd be. I think he's maybe closer than Coach Redpill. But theoretically, he could have driven to Portugal, beaten the brakes off of Ralph, and stole his purse. Suspect number four, Andy. Stammer and Worski. Worski's the one that got this all started by goading Ralph into going to Portugal. Andy has connections to people in Portugal. Andy understands the layout of Portugal. Theoretically possible he could have flown out there, visited family members, and then beaten Ralph and stolen his purse. Suspect number five. 
Josh Moon, head a log of the Kiwi Farms, and death enemy, <laughs> sworn blood enemy of Ethan Ralph. These two hate each other so much, they'll fuck eventually. Now, he also, from what I understand, is in Europe. A lot of these are European, now that I think about it. He's over in Europe. He has the opportunity. And what better trophy? What better trophy? What better way of getting back at Ralph after stealing Chris Chan's arrest than stealing his purse? Just saying. Finally, we have suspect number six, Dick Masterson. Dick Masterson faked breaking his foot, set Ralph up to go overseas, and then sent me videos that he edited making fun of Ralph that I just played on stream. Seems like maybe Dick's got something going on there. Now, our first poll is done. Let's see. Suspect number two and four are the big ones. So we're going to do one final poll, chat, and we're going to ask you who the one who did it is. You voted two, and you voted four, and now we'll put up five and six. Who is the guilty suspect? How much music do we got left? I'll put it so we got another two minutes of music going. Oh, yeah. Vote now for the great Who Done It. Who stole Ethan Ralph's purse? That's, that's the first clue. Now, now what do we do? That's, that's the first clue. We got to find the Tick tock, chat. Hong Kong. Voting's coming to an end, chat. I'm going to end the poll here in, in 10 seconds. Get your vote in. Get your vote in now. <laughs> oh, five, four, three, two, one. Who's our winner? Number five. Suspect number five, Joshua Connor Moon. Evil A-log of the Kiwi Farms. Death enemy of Ethan Ralph and purse thief extraordinaire. Running his criminal signet, or his, uh, criminal syndicate overseas probably selling armani purses as we speak chat has spoken and they've said that <laughs> that Noel is the guiltiest party of course we'll give some runner up uh, credit to andy warski and matt jarbo in number three it looks like crp trout and uh trout and t and uh, dick masterson can leave the stage there they've been cleared no on the other hand it's gonna have to come on down for an interview I think he's been, I think he's been pinned as being guilty on this. <laughs> how do you, how do you do that? Like, it's just, how, how do you get beaten? Uh, you know, where are we here? Here we go. Like, this looks like a severe beating. Now he said, uh, I think in his, uh, where's the dick one? Dick's broken foot. Uh, a four on one fight. It was four people that accosted him is what he said. He got into a fight, chased after them, got beaten some more, ended up in the hospital. And then needed to have uh, orbital bone surgery or something done with his nose. I, I'm not 100% certain. But just based on that picture, it looks like he got a shit kick. I mean, that looks like, I don't know. Usually when I think robberies, I think, oh, they'll hit you uh, once or twice. Rif you know, uh, rifle through your pockets, maybe. And then they're out of there. But that looks like, I, I don't know, man. That looks like that. That looks like a beating. That looks like a severe beating. I didn't know Null had it in him. Apparently he does. Out there beating people in the streets. <laughs> Now, we could have a mystery seventh option. Uh, right before all this happened, uh, Ralph was saying that he was going to fuck the quartering's wife. <laughs> and him and the quartering were having a long argument on Twitter about that. A lot of people don't know this. Quartering's wife owns a plane. She's a pilot, a licensed pilot. She knows how to fly it. It is theoretically possible that the quartering's wife flew out to Lisbon, Portugal, followed Ralph on the streets at night, beat him with a pipe, stole his purse. Well, you know, it, it makes sense. What would a woman want? A purse. 
and then flew back to America and nobody would ever know. Who would ever suspect the Quartering's wife of carrying out such a sophisticated attack and then leaving Joshua Moon to take the blame for it? It's a possibility. I guess we'll never know the truth 100%, but it's out there. <laughs> Throw it out there just, just in case. Just in case the viewers might be curious. Uh, my super chats have been wiped from the stream because of the Sony sisters or Mersh or whatever the fuck happened. So I guess I won't be answering those questions. Uh, oh, God, what what song can we play as an outro since, you know, we've been demonetized on this stream? What, what, what's a good, what's a good mm, uh, uh, mbop song? You know, a nice upbeat Chud Bud song. Chud Bud energy song that we can end this stream on. Something, something we can all like. Something positive. We really want to get that pause going, right? Because this is the year of the Chud. Everything's looking good. It's white-pilled as fuck. And we want something positive to end on. And I have the perfect song for it. I hope you all have a fantastic February. Let's keep that energy going. Let's keep the honking going. Never let the honking stop. Never, ever let the honking stop. Stop. And I will see you for the February recap, where hopefully more uh, insanely funny shit has happened, and uh, more of that chud energy is at the forefront. Chat, I wish you the best. And let's, uh, let's leave it with this amazing, upbeat, positive song.